We're James and Sophie from Needy Cat Games, and we designed Hellboy the board game. That we did, and here we are at Mantic HQ to tell you a few things about how to play the game itself. We thought we'd come over, record a few videos, uh, so that people that prefer not to read a rule book, but to watch people teach them, have got, you know, just as much of a chance of getting their head around the rules as anyone else. Mm -hmm. We uh, are going to show you how to set up a case file, how to play through the different phases of the game, and then we'll do a last kind of roundup of any bits that might seem a bit more tricky, but really, really aren't. So, uh, Soph, where are we starting? Right, first of all, it's set up. So the first thing you need to do is to find the case file that you want to play. Yeah. We're starting off with the, hey, you read this first. <laughs> this is actually, so the case file is called eviction notice, uh -huh. but you wouldn't know that looking at it. So when you open your box of Hellboy, you'll notice you've got a whole load of case files. Uh, they're in these sealed packets and these all say stop, don't read this side. Flip them over and they have a little description of what the case is. Mm -hmm. Now there is no set order to play these. Nope. Um, I'm sure that crackly noise is really handy. Uh, so I'm going to move these over here out of the way. Um, there's no set order but we do recommend that you do this one first. It is the most straightforward, easy case file. Don't get me wrong, you're not guaranteed a win, but it's the easiest to get your head around. Mm -hmm. And it would be a really easy one for us to just talk through all of the different faces of the game. Yeah. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through the case file in order. Yeah. So get rid, get rid of that one. And we've got a fiction notice. So this is case file number 126779. The numbers all mean something, honest. <laughs> I've had someone asking me actually, do, do the numbers, are they relevant? Should you play them in order? No, play them however you want. Yeah, it's there's, there's no order. Yeah. There's no order. You'll get like a whole load of colour text here. We'll let you enjoy it and read it at home. I mean, I mean I'm sure we can flash stuff on the screen and you can pause the video and read it yourself in your best Mike Mignola style. Mm -hmm. um, but the key point is, so I've talked about the challenge rating. And, okay, uh, so at the bottom we've got a challenge rating. This one is, cha is challenge rating as easy and duration is short. So this is a relatively easy and relatively short game. All the different case files have different challenge ratings and lengths, so you can pick one to suit your gaming needs. Yeah, the idea is you don't know what's going to be in the case file going into it. That just gives you an inkling of the kind of game you're going to play. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing as well you'll notice is that each case file in its bottom corner does have a small icon uh, which just tells you which case, case file it comes from. So if for any reason you shuffle all your cards together, you're ready to get them back in order. Yeah. Also importantly, these cards um, are in a set order. You notice that as well there's a number that says one of five. Mm -hmm. uh, the card should be replaced at the end of the game back in that order, because as you'll see, you play through the case files one card at a time. Sure enough, that's the first, the, the front of the first card done. So we flip that, that first card so over. We're going to place that on our case file area. Oh yes, yeah, so this is our HQ board over here. Let's uh, bring this into shot slightly. Uh, and what we have here, this is the... Oh, I'm going to turn it towards the camera. How's that for some fun stuff? Uh, we've got... Uh, the HQ board here is kind of the, the nerve centre of your board game. Mm -hmm. This covers all the information other than what's going on on the board itself. So at the top here you've got the, uh, the impending doom track which is, well, it's generally there'll be a marker on it somewhere and uh, you will place this, the Impending Doom tracker, that will that'll sit on there and it will advance along generally up to once a turn, yeah. sometimes more. And um, when it hits the marker, the confrontation begins, that kind of figures the end game. You then have the Information Gathered track, which is uh, which starts there and uh, yeah. again, as yeah. you investigate clues, you'll pick up information. Yeah, it tracks all the sort of different clues that you'll be getting throughout the, the game, which can be quite important depending on which game you're playing. Absolutely. Every uh, case file uses um, the, the information gathered track differently. Generally, there will be uh, these uh, insight markers placed onto here. And as a note, these are all the uh, upgraded plastic components from the Kickstarter edition. The retail version of the board game has cardboard tokens for these. Uh, there are some graphics floating around which we've made which show you which ones translate to which. Mm -hmm. But yeah, generally you'll have insight tokens when you move this tracker along, you'll hit an insight token, pick it up, and then that will help you out in the confrontation in some way. Key point here is that you always start off with one doom and no information. That's how every case begins. Something bad's going on and you don't know what yet. Mm -hmm. um, also, the, 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 kind of the, the last important part that isn't a card deck is here. This is the target priority track. I think we'll come back to that. And talk we'll come about back to that in a moment. So I think the first thing we need to do is to show you what else we do with this board. Yep. So we're going to 
flip this card. So you might notice I haven't moved it off because we're going down through the deck in order. Yeah. So the first thing we do is we follow the instructions. So it says the deck of doom it consists of all the cards with these icons. So deck of doom. It's a deck of poker sized cards. And the top left corner has got a set of icons in. Mm -hmm. You will find that pretty much every case file includes this grey icon. They're like your core set. So they go in. And then what else are we after, Soph? Well, we're after the red uh, sort of backwards P. That's these two. Yeah. We've got a, a blue T. A blue T. These two here. Yeah. And all of the agent, the yeah. relevant agent. So every icons. agent has their own deck of doom card with their picture up, up in the top corner. And that's something which just applies to them. Now we've decided we're going to play Hellboy and Liz in this uh, scenario. So put those two cards in there. That, that needs a good shuffle. Mm -hmm. So the deck of doom is... It's going to throw a lot of spanners into the game, uh, so to speak. You're going to find different enemies jumping out. You're going to find different things happening. You know, Hellboy might go a bit crazy and lose his temper. Liz might go slightly on fire more than normal. Um, the point is, the Deck of Doom means that every time you play a game, it's different. So this case file, even though it's dead simple, we've played it, I mean, how many times? I have actually lost count. And it's different every time. It yeah. really is. Every case file. There's only six in the, in, in the box but every one is endlessly replayable. Yeah. Largely so don't go thinking, oh, there's only six things. No. Yeah, there's a lot of st stuff in here. The Deck of Doom gives you replayability and using different agents gives you replayability. Yeah. And the unpredictable nature of how the enemies behave gives you replayability, yes. which we'll go into later. And so, actually, another thing that gives you re replayability is the encounter deck. Yep, yeah, so now we're st setting up the encounter deck. So there's two agents, that's me and James. So we've got one of these blue eyes. Is, so and we go two. for the icon at the bottom of the encounter card, so I'll get one of those, and two of the red M's. So what you generally do is you would get all your blue cards, shuffle them together, and then draw one of those at random, and then draw two red ones at random. Yep. So you get that, you shuffle those, you don't look at them. You don't look at them in too much detail, no. and then we're just going to pop them there for the short term. And that means our deck is, is prepped and good to go for now, so we'll come back to it in a minute, but for now we'll just put it over here off to one side and Sophie if you could reach and put those on there that'd be great yeah I've, I've sent those cards just completely oh, off kilter they're just so, so bad uh, it? then it gives us a board layout which we can quickly do here conveniently we have all these tiles ready it's like we planned it uh, so we just replicate what is shown on the board uh, on the card sorry incidentally uh, this just playing on a non-slip gaming mat is awesome although it's actually got to be said the the tiles are really chunky, they don't, 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 don't have to slip around anyway. No, not at all. Um, so these are what we call uh, room tiles. Uh, each room is made up of a number of areas. So we've got a one area room here, this is a two area room, and a four area room over here. Mm -hmm. Generally things in the game will affect rooms or areas, um, and doors are what link the rooms together. So we place those there. And finally we place the starting area marker as shown in there. So we've now set that up as shown on the case file. Fantastic. So now what we're going to do... As it says at the bottom... It says discard this card after placing the, uh, placing the encounter cards. So, so we need to place the encounter cards. Those three cards, we put one into each room that is not the starting area. So some case files will tell you two different things, but yeah. unless otherwise stated, you always do that. You deal those out to there. And what these have in them is... Uh, it will tell you the contents of that room, so that will tell you whether there's enemies, scenery, clues, different things. And again, that means that every time you play it, you're hitting different things in each room. Mm -hmm. So now, we'll discard that card, and now we read the next card down. So this says, put an insight marker on spaces 2, 4 and 8 of the information gathered. So there are those. And then it says, put a reaction marker on this card and the matching trigger marker on the following space of the impending beam track. Brilliant. Forgive the, the noises, I forgot to get the, uh, <laughs> the trigger and reaction markers out. So trigger and reaction markers are easy to spot. They are small round tokens with letters on, which... Uh, my giant hands. Come on, we can do this. Um, these are tiles which basically you can use to connect different game components together. So here, we'll use two of them, there we go, two letter E's, doesn't really matter which letter you use, as long as they're both matching. 
And what you'll do is you'll generally put them, like shown here, one on a card, one on a track, for example. And this says move this card to the in-play area and discard it if the confrontation begins. So the in-play area is the area above the HQ deck, or HQ yeah. board, sorry. And uh, oh, yeah, so basically, nice. that is our trigger point for the uh, Impending Doom track. So when the Impending Doom marker reaches the, ins the uh, trigger marker there, we'll flip over to the reaction marker which is on that card and it'll tell us to flip that card over. Generally, in any case file, uh, you're gonna follow a kind of a standard se sequence of events. You'll play through an investigation where you're wandering around looking for clues. You might have additional things you're trying to do depending on the case file itself. And at some point the confrontation will trigger, at which point you'll generally fight a boss, although that's not always the case. Um, and there are usually three ways to reach that confrontation. Three of them. Go on, so all three. So... <laughs> Sorry, I put you completely on the spot there. Um, so there are <laughs> no, three ways to reach the confrontation. Yes, oh, it's okay. So uh, the first thing is uh, that you complete your investigation. You get to the end of the case file and you naturally come across whatever the confrontation be, be it a big boss or... So Rasputin's uh, doing some evil exactly. nefariousness in a lab, you find the lab. Exactly. Then you've got uh, that you uh, run out of time. So that's, uh, you know, Rasputin does whatever it is he's trying to do, that's when the impending doom track hits that marker, mm -hmm. bad things happen. And that generally is worse because you've had less time and you've had less opportunity to gain clue tokens yep. that may help you in the final, final confrontation. Um, and also what it does is it stops you from being able to maybe get any additional cool things that might be that it's sort of laid around the, the, the investigation in a way that might support you having that battle. And sometimes it means the boss gets more of an upper hand because they're yeah. ready for you. Basically. Exactly. And then the, the third way is that they all get uh, knocked out. So yeah, there's generally, there's no player elimination in this game. If your agent gets knocked out, you're down until the enemies have been cleared off the board and you get back up. But if all the agents are down at once, that's bad and that triggers the confrontation in its own way. So what's quite cool is you always get to play the confrontation. It just comes down to how you get there. Yeah, and ideally you don't want to be, you know, caught when you're completely unconscious by whatever the big bad thing is. There are several moments in the comics where, you know, Hellboy wakes up in a place yep. having been dragged somewhere. That, that's kind of what we're going for with that. So, uh, the next card down, it says, move this card to the in-play area. If the agents take time, put this card immediately after advancing the impending doom track. So taking time is a mechanic you can do. Um, if there are no enemies on the board, you can rest up. It's where your knocked out agents get back up. And you can generally, um, you know, look for clues in a more effective way. It represents the agents slowing down, taking time, maybe recovering a bit of damage, all that kind of thing. Okay. And uh, we need to move this a little bit more to... In to this side. Into shot. Let's let, let's shuffle things. You know, I was saying how great the non-slip map was a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Um, speaking of awesome mats, uh, big shout out to Matt behind the camera, hey. who's doing great work as always. There's a lot of mats around Mantic. A lot of us, yeah. It's just like a, a, like a, a mystical. Yeah, my I didn't mean of mats. to say plague, that wasn't the word that was coming out. <laughs> plague of mats. <laughs> I was thinking more like a locust. Wow. But I didn't mean it in a bad way. <laughs> I mean it. What's, what's the opposite of a plague? I, I think it stopped talking. Okay, yeah. Should we maybe Let's, reset? No, no, I think we carry on. We push on. This, this, this adds to the charm. Um, so we, we moved that into shot here. Um, we've got the next case file gives us a little bit of colour text telling us that we're heading underground. We're on the hunt for a big frog monster. Uh, and now we're going to set the minion slots. Tell us about the minion slots, Sophie. Well, so the minion slots here say prepare the minion slots as followed. There's A, B, C, D along the bottom of your HQ board. And what you do is you put the relevant um, minion into the relevant slot. And those are going to be uh, the way that you interact with those uh, minions throughout the rest of the game. Now in the core game it's largely frog monsters. As you get expansions and the Kickstarter exclusive stuff that adds more minions in. Yeah that you can always add in for a bit more flavour if you want. And generally the board, will, so the game cards will not refer to specific minions, they'll refer to one of the slots. Yes. So in a room you might find a minion A and a minion B. So for this case file that would be those two minions that are there, the Rampaging Frog Monster and a Venomous Frog Monster. Uh, in a different case file that could be uh, a Harpy and a Witch, or it could be um, well, anything, there's all sorts of different things it could be. And in the BPRD Archives expansion, there is a mode where you can literally shuffle all your enemy cards together and lay out a completely random set. And uh, it's kind of the, the wacky arcade mode where you can fight just about anything. Oh, that's not day. the right one. 
<laughs> yeah, giant frog monster is not the minion that you were looking for. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so we've got our four minions set out here. And this tells us then if all the rooms have been explored, so all these cards have been turned over, and there are no minions on the, on the board in the end phase, flip this card. Okay. And then it says, begin the first, first round. round. Oh, so. you know what else we should do? We, we totally forgot to do. The other, when we set the uh, encounter cards up, as part of setup, we should also have put our agents into the starting area. Into the starting um, area. So you notice we've got the coloured base clips on these here. Um, the, uh, the I, I believe these are pre-production resins, which are quite fragile, so I'm hoping those base clips come up again. But uh, with your, your um, ones you've got in your box, the idea of the clips is they clip on to show which colour you are. And that matters when you're looking at your um, action cubes and also your target priority marker, which is here. Or, again, if you've got the awesome Kickstarter edition, these busts that we're using. Now, these need to be put onto the HQ board uh, in order. On, on, the, on, on your agent board, and we'll do, do a little section later on what the different agent boards um, have on them. But we've all got a threat value. My threat value is seven, yours is ten, which means you go furthest forward on the target priority track. And with that, I believe we are ready to start playing. So um, I think we will, we'll, we'll cut the video there and we'll start talking next about how the enemy phase works.